2014, Zoe and I did the two-week Wild West tour in the USA with Eagle Rider, and soon knew we wanted to go back for more. Two years later, we flew our own bikes across, and spent ten weeks on our USA and Canadian adventure. We left Monument Valley, and despite the start and destination points both being in Utah, our route took us back into Arizona for a while, to meet the Colorado River again. stopped just outside Page at Horseshoe Bend Overlook which is um, a very famous viewpoint on the Colorado River as it heads down into the Grand Canyon so we're north of the Grand Canyon at the moment um, and it's sort of a horseshoe shape bend in the Colorado and everybody flocks here to take that one picture of the horseshoe so that's what we've done although um, it also involved a might or involves it also involves a mile and a half, I'm going to call it a hike, on the desert floor, which you can see um, there and back, in the midday sun, which must make us English, I guess. In bike gear. And we're, also, we're in bike gear as well, which doesn't help. As you can see, I'm using my buff on my head to try and stop my head burning. Um, but yeah, bike jeans and bike boots is not necessarily the best for this sort of thing, but never mind. How many miles have we done? What, today? so far? About 150. We've done 100 today. miles so far, I think 120 miles so far. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you can't actually see. There we go. Now you're in it. But um, really glad we came. It's uh, quite a, a spectacular view and uh, definitely worth it. Um, no facilities here, apart from one little shelter we can see at the very top of the hill. Um, but yeah, definitely worth it. So if you're in this area, Make sure you come here, bring water. <laughs> So now we're at the Colorado from a different angle. We're taking um, a route which is apparently an old stagecoach route. Um, we've got the north rim of the Grand Canyon that way and um, Monument Valley that way. And we're heading west. Yeah, we're heading west. There are a lot of these uh, tar snakes, I'll show you one. Uh, where we are at the moment, that's that's a small amount. Some of the uh, tar the the road has a lot of it, and the, the, when it's cooler they're fine. But at this temperature, they uh, they they ver they start to turn liquid again. If I do this with my foot, there you go. You can see that's that's effectively liquid, and uh, that means as you ride over them on your motorbike, you slide on each one. You'll probably see a bit more of the footage in a minute.
carried on riding, admiring the vermilion cliffs and enjoying the breeze generated by the movement of the bikes, even if it was quite a warm breeze. To get to the heart of Zion National Park, you have to ride or drive this fantastic route. Yes, it's busy, but look at that scenery. Once parked up, we hopped onto one of the shuttle buses to get to the start of a short hiking trail. Zion uh, National Park today, it's more specifically Zion Canyon and we're current, we've just been through the Emerald Pools and now we're heading back towards the grotto. We're just over there along that part there, there are two waterfalls that we've just walked under that make up the lower Emerald Pools, one just there and one just there and you walk through the rock um, and then the path comes up through here. After the hike, we used the shuttle buses to see some more of Zion. And then, of course, we had to ride back through the scenery at the end of the day. Tell, tell us again about the area. Oh, so this is the east side of the Zion National Park and this is called Slip Rock and you can see it's all really flat and smooth and that up there, that rock there is, is quite famous and it's an important landmark and it's either called Mesa Rock or Mosaic Rock, I can't remember which. Is it Checkerboard? Checkerboard? No, I don't know. Checkerboard might be it. Anyway, it's because it's all, yeah, Checkerboard. We'll say Checkerboard. These desert bighorn sheep had found a tasty snack at the side of the road. We set off from Kanab, heading to Bryce Canyon to see the Hoodoos, staying in just the one state this day. Bryce Canyon National 
National Park, which apparently isn't actually a canyon, but never mind, we won't hold that against them. Um, and we've come here to the natural bridge. In the video earlier, it said that it wasn't actually natural, although it was caused by erosion, which to us seems natural, so we're not really sure about the name. But um, it's very interesting anyway. We were at 9,000 feet just now, up at Rainbow Point. The main bit of the park is at 8,000 feet. Um, and tonight we're staying at Ruby's Inn, which is somewhere we stayed on the last trip as well. I got a little bit of altitude sickness at 9,200 feet, but I hoped that as we spent more time at altitude I'd get used to it, particularly since we were planning to go quite a bit higher later on in the trip. For the second day in a row, I forgot to turn off the camera that was attached to my helmet, so you've got some more footage of us going into the hotel room. and uh, we've just stopped off at the gen local general store slash post office slash cafe had a drink and some crisps had a chat with the owner here we didn't plan in particular to come to where we are now but we've ended up in uh, I'm looking at the sign capital reef national park um, See behind me, there's these uh, red cliffs and rocks that we've seen elsewhere. Um, it's quite quite a nice route that we're on. Uh, it's it's just what we picked as a reasonable way to get to Goblin Valley State Park, where we're we're heading at some point today. But we might pop into the visitor centre here and uh, see what there is to see here before we go any further. This is uh, Goblin Valley Park. No, yes. This is Goblin Valley State Park, um, which means our normal National Parks Pass doesn't apply. We have to pay to get in this one, but that's okay. Um, I think uh, these must be where the goblins hide. Is that, is that right, Zoe? Is I think these are the goblins. Oh, these are the goblins. Right. Okay, I think the goblins are asleep then. Um, the poke one. No, I don't know. I don't know when the goblins wake up. Um, hopefully not in the next half an hour or so while we're looking around. You like my hat. So I don't know if you recognise this. If you like the same sort of movies as we do, then you might. This is actually where they filmed one of the scenes in Galaxy Quest. Um, the sort of Star Trek, Star Wars spoof movie with Tim Allen and Sigourney Weaver. Um, this is the bit where they fi filmed the crash. They were coming to find that beryllium or whatever it was they were looking for. Um, actually, that might be a Star Trek reference. I don't know now. I've got them all muddled up. But anyway, this is where they filmed Galaxy Quest. Um, and you can just kind of imagine where it was. It looks exactly right. We saw a lot of these RVs that are the size of large coaches and too big for most UK campsites but catered for well in the States. Some people sell their homes to buy one of these and spend their time travelling around with prices being in the hundreds of thousands of dollars and I can see the appeal in the US. I spoke to one man who used to own one and I asked him whether a different driving licence is needed because it would be back home. And he said, probably, but he didn't bother and neither did most people. 
These machines have air conditioning throughout, a dishwasher, washing machine, tumble dryer, big screen TV in the lounge, TV in the bedroom, TV for outside when you're having the barbecue, and the barbecue itself, which normally slides out of a compartment. You can also get toy haulers, where the back section is a garage for your motorbikes, quad bikes, wet bikes, or other toys. We're at Canyonland National Park today and uh, we're just using the bikes to see some of the amazing views across the canyons and towards the mountains. Um, apparently those mountains are 152 miles away which gives you an idea of how far we can see today. Um, and it's really, really fascinating. It's very, very warm as well. Oh, and I should also mention the mosquitoes which are just everywhere and very, very annoying. We've bought some super strong mozzie spray because the one we had with us isn't uh, doing the job but um, this one's got some amazing chemical in it which I'm sure is very bad for us but hopefully it's also very bad for the mosquitoes too. We did a short hike to Mesa Arch which was well worth it and gave us one of my favourite photos from the trip. cabin at the KOA campground. We're not camping just because it's way too hot and these have got uh, cooling in the cabins and uh, it's the, the cooling thing is down here. Let me swap the camera over. Here we go. Um, the only thing is it's, it's a little bit noisy. I don't know if you can hear me even. So we'll see if we can sleep through the noise or not. At that KOA in Moab, we saw a bigger RV, which as well as the extendable section for the lounge, had a further extension which became a balcony, where the owners sat eating their barbecue. We also had a chat with a group of bikers doing a tour from Florida on airheads, including an R80RT. Their bikes kept breaking down. After a bit of direction clarification, we headed towards Arches National Park. Arches is one that requires a bit of walking, as it turns out. It was 38 degrees that day, and we knew we weren't dressed or prepared for hiking in those temperatures, so had to admire from distance. Heat exhaustion and stroke is such a frequent problem here that rangers are stationed at the start of popular routes to check people are prepared, and we were asked, how far are you going, as we got off our bikes. Only about 300 feet, I replied. Good, she said, you can't walk far dressed like that. Take water with you even for that distance. As I said, we admire from a distance. It was time for a couple of nights in one place and a day off the bikes, and we picked Durango in Colorado. Durango has a famous railway line and railway museum, where there are lots of toy soldiers. See? Lots. It also has a drive-in movie theatre. It has some real trains as well, and having failed to repair the SR-71 earlier in the trip, Alistair tried his hand at train mechanics, but didn't get anywhere. We walked along the river, which often has kayakers and rafters on it, but was too high to be safe at the time we were there, and made sure to visit the famous Diamond Bell Saloon. <laughs> 